My name is Jacob Armstrong, and I'd like to welcome you to this Advent study of Christmas gifts that won't break. Advent is a time that we wait, we expect, and hopefully we hope. In fact, one of the best gifts most of us could receive this year would be the gift of hope. For a ray of hope to crack through the darkness in our life, in our communities, in our world. For us to wake up a bit from our grief or our cynicism or our doubt to hope again. That kind of hope is found in Jesus. In chapter one of Christmas Gifts That Won't Break, James Moore shares with us of the hope found in the name of Jesus. There is hope in hearing and speaking Jesus' name. There is hope in his actual name. He reminds us of that old song that says, Jesus, 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 there is something about that name. And there is. We learn that the name Jesus means savior or deliverer. But it's also important to note that the name Jesus is from the Hebrew name Joshua. Joshua was one of our Old Testament heroes, maybe most famous for leading God's people around the walls of Jericho when the walls came down. So the name Jesus is a reminder of walls coming down. For us, the name Jesus can mean wall breaker. As we read in chapter one, Jesus as a wall breaker is best understood against the backdrop of the temple in biblical times. The temple is where one met with God. It's where in some ways it was thought that God resided. And there in the temple were walls that held people out. Foreigners and people of other races were held out by a wall. Women were held back by another wall. Then only the priests could go so far. The fourth wall was a veil, a curtain that separated the Holy of Holies, that's where God's spirit was, from everyone. Everyone except one priest who could go meet with God one time a year. When Jesus died on the cross, that curtain, the veil, was torn from top to bottom. Everybody was let in. God's Spirit was not something anymore that could be held back from all people. That's what the angels announced at Jesus' birth. Behold, I bring you good news of great joy for all people. Jesus tears down every wall that separates us from God. Now that's hope. At Advent, the first candle we light is the candle of hope. Before we can receive any of the other gifts, love, joy, peace, we need hope. The first time I met Chad and Tana Clark, I met Hope. Hope is their dog's name. I've now been in a small group at church with Chad and Tana for eight years. But the first time I met them was in their living room for our first gathering, and Hope, the family dog, greeted me first. Hope was a dog rescued from a shelter. Hope has only three legs. That's right, they have a beautiful little dog that sort of glides around the house on three legs, and her name is Hope. We ended up naming our group the Hope Group in honor of the dog we have so much in common with. Hope for the Clarks, though, extends much further than the funny but fitting name for their canine. Chad and Tana, after selling their home, moving into a smaller one, and simplifying their life, founded a school in Haiti for kids that need hope. Now, some years later, the school they started in the name of Hope feeds and educates over a hundred children every day. A few weeks before Advent, our small group sat with Chad and Tana and learned that Chad's cancer had returned. It was a Wednesday night and the Hope group was together again in a living room. We gathered close and listened to Chad. We searched for hope. It was the first time that I'd ever seen Chad, an engineer, tear up. He said that he didn't want his illness to be a distraction from all the good work God is doing in the school in Haiti. He urged us to not give up hope even in the midst of a difficult time and a devastating diagnosis. 
Chad and Tana are amazing and normal. And that's how hope comes through Jesus, in the most amazing, normal way, as a baby, with amazing and normal Mary and Joseph. That's what I love every Christmas about the people we get to encounter in these stories. They are amazing and normal, and the fact that God works through them gives us great hope. Even if I've sinned, even if my family history is a bit spotty, I get in on the story if Mary and Joseph do. Mary and Joseph did what God asked of them, named what was God's, God's. They named him Jesus, Savior, Deliverer, Wall Breaker. We have since lost our dear friend Chad to cancer. His legacy of hope, though, lives on. It lives on in the name of Jesus, the one who saves, the one who breaks down walls. That's the hope of the Christmas story, amazing normal people of God. It is for you. You are in it, no matter what. It's for people who've been murderers, adulterers, and afraid. Check out Jesus' family lineage. It's for those of us who've experienced great loss. It's for those with cancer. It's for three-legged dogs. It's for all of us. As we read in chapter 1 of Christmas Gifts That Won't Break, the Holy of Holies, which represented the presence of God, was remote, fearsome, and unapproachable. But then came Jesus, and He broke down the dividing walls and made us one. He brought God out to all the people. That's what Christmas is about. God breaking out. God smashing down the walls. God coming warmly and wonderfully into our lives. God could have sent a king from the clouds, that's what everyone expected. That's how most of us would have drawn it up if we had been God in the heavens. But our God included us. Mary, Joseph, Chad, Tana, you, and me. Jesus came amazing, yes, with the power to tear the curtain from top to bottom. And Jesus came normal. And that's where we find hope. Where do you need hope? Where do you find hope this Advent?